133. All right, so what are we talking about today? Today's topic is five ways to tell if a song is a hit. Oh my goodness, <laughs> this is good for me because I really don't know. <laughs> so. Okay, so, so again, this is one of those age old questions yes. that as artists we ask, but that we have heard yes. over the years. Right. And so, you know, that we've heard people talk about, you know, other artists talk about. Right. And so we have collected the five ways that we have heard. From other people. Other people Thank and you. with our own, you know, informed by our own experience as I, I don't know about that part of it. You know, <laughs> I'm going to leave that to her. But I, I want to say this, and I know we're going to say this at the end, too. And that is, this is one where we sincerely want your input. Oh yeah, I like this that. This is a thing yes. where this is really this is not a thing where we can tell you what right. It is. No, no, no. But Sorry. I'm saying this is this is <laughs> one of those holy grail type of yes. situations, you know. It's like how do you know? How you know, good song, hit, you know, artist synonymous, all that kind right. of stuff. Right. Oh, but I go ahead, that. let's get going. Oh yeah, so probably should make that distinction good song and hit may may it's a Venn diagram. It may overlap, maybe not. But because right. William Hung and, and or some of these other songs, a disco duck uh, yeah, hit, yeah. but was it a good song? But that's a whole other topic for a different right. conversation. Today, our first um, way to tell if a song is a hit is, of course, the objective numerical results chart position. Right, so I almost don't look at that as anything that helps the creative process. No. So meaning that this is something that happens after the yeah. fact. Yeah. So, uh, you but know. But yeah, right, but then you can, ch after... It's over then in the in the annals of time. I guess it's kind of that Shakespeare thing. What ends up on the yes. as a part of the canon? Yeah, yeah. The, you know, I mean that that people can analyze what have been hit songs over the mm -hmm. years, and I think people have noticed that. Yeah, the, the repetition is a key to it. Yeah, and you know, and several other factors. Yeah. that go into making a song a quote unquote hit. Yeah. So. All right, so yeah. empirical evidence. So the chart position is number one. The second way to know, to tell if a song is a hit is um, Sting said how he knew was strangers singing his song. Right. That he was, what was the story? Yeah, so him? Sting said that he was, I think it was like 1978, 79, whenever. They were on tour and, you know, and he was sleeping. And he was awakened by the guy who was washing the windows. Oh, yeah, window washer, yeah. And he was singing Roxanne or whistling. Whistling, Roxanne. Roxanne right. right. And he was saying at that time he knew that he had a hit single. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, that probably is like a Twilight Zone moment. Right. right? Yeah, I love that. All right, so uh, a third way to tell if a song is a hit is can you remember what you came up with? And that's always your kind of your ticket to whether or not to keep the part or to yeah, try to find a lot of times else. yeah you know a, a thing that I always that I would go by is that if, if I can remember the part so mm -hmm. man if I come up with a part and I really think it's good and if I can remember it the next day mm -hmm. then that would usually be the thing that I would keep I think sometimes this is a part that's hard now now in the day and age of and I think Paul McCartney talked about this too when you when you now could use your phone to do the memos, oh yeah, you can keep a lot of these ideas, yeah. right? And so now you end up with a cavalcade of ideas, yeah. and it's sort of like all of a sudden it's like okay now, ugh, right. you know which one is the good one? Right. Whereas before, you know, I, I know for me it would be it's the one that I remember, yeah. And so if it's if I remember it, that's then that's like the that one, stickiness. right? That's the one that I'm gonna go ahead and finish, right? Whereas now, you know, it's it's kind of a little bit different because. So now it has to be the one that calls to me. Right. So it has to be the one that okay. I'm hearing in my head. Okay. That I start saying, you know what, I, I need to go back to this. Yeah. And then go and pick it up. So mm -hmm. if I'm not hearing in my head, then, you know, sometimes I have to let it go. You yeah. know, so. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot tougher now that you can record. Yeah. A lot more than what you used to. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I like that, though. But that works for me because that's kind of how it is with blog posts and some of these other things. Yeah. That if there's something I can't wait to work on. So again, it sticks in my head and it calls me back. Yes. Then I know, hey, this is this is the one. Let me spend my time here. Yeah. All right. Um. So the number four way to tell if your song is a hit is if you get goosebumps, and that goes back to a Quincy Jones. Yeah, story. Quincy Jones said that. Uh, I guess when they were working on Thriller, is that you know they went through like six hundred songs, mm -hmm. and you know, and he was really looking for that. Mm -hmm thing and so 
Um, he actually went to, who oh, I, I can't remember, the guys from Total okay. that wrote Human Nature, okay, right? right? So mm -hmm. so he asked them, hey, look, you know, send me, you know, what you got. And the guy um, sent them a tape, right? Uh -huh. And he put everything he had on the A side of the tape, uh -huh. right? But he had this other thing he was working on, the B side of the tape. Yeah. And so um, so what he intended for Quincy Jones to listen to was what was on the A side. A side, right. So, but Quincy Jones listened to what was on the A side. I guess he did not get goosebumps from what he heard on the A side. And he had one of those cassette tapes that automatically flips over to the B yeah. side. It flipped over to the B side. And what would become human nature play. Oh, wow. And so he heard that. And he was like, oh, my goodness. Right. This is, that was it. Yeah. And he called. And he was like, hey, man, uh, I'd really like that song. And the guy was thinking, okay, one of the songs on the A side. Right. And he said, no, no, when the guy was going through all the different songs, no, no, he said, that why, oh, why, that, that, that song, that's that's the one I'm talking about. <laughs> he was like, what? And then he realized that he had put, you know, that human nature was, was on, on the, the B side of yeah. that. Yeah, oh, my goodness. So, yeah, so, but that's that type of thing yeah. where it, it wasn't a situation where, you know, um, just because somebody sends you something that they intend for it to right. be the hit, that that's going to be the one. It was, for him, it was that one that gave him the goosebumps. So. Well, even f with, uh, related to the Quincy Jones thing, mm -hmm. I thought it was him or was somebody else that said that Michael Jackson had had a similar type thing, that if he couldn't stop dancing... Yeah, yeah, Michael Jackson was he, like that. Yeah. And so yeah. even when other people like, okay... Well, this song is not that great, but if he couldn't stop dancing, You're right? Yeah, then and, they're and, like, okay, this is the one we got to get. Smooth Criminals, one of those things okay. where him and Quincy Jones really kind of had a divide on. Right. So you know, Quincy Jones hated that song, right? Whereas Michael Jackson loved it, yeah. You know, and so and Quincy Jones, that inhale, you okay? All right, and and I, okay. <laughs> just, just. <laughs> <laughs> Did not care much for that. I, I, I kind of, I think, probably spelled the end for their relationship. Aww, you know? But, but I mean, it was one of those things that that's what right. they kept saying. That, that, that Michael Jackson come in and he's just dancing. He dancing. And it probably was Michael Jackson's growth as a producer and mm -hmm. the growth and the vision of what he wanted. Yeah. Was probably what was starting to happen there. But, it's yeah. It's time to break away. Yeah. Mm, that maturity. All right. And then, finally, uh, the fifth way that you can tell if your song is a hit is back to your original point yeah, yeah. that the majority of songwriters, artists, and articles and, and documentaries that we have watched, yeah. you know, because over the years, this has been something we've kind of kept our, our radar open for, is you really can't tell. Yeah. Again, you don't know until the ship has sailed. Yes. Until you put it all out there and then this one yeah. is the one that, that, you know, it thrives. And it's hard to say what it would be, you know. So, like, I, I think when Sting originally did Roxanne, it was a bossa nova. Oh, that's right. You know what I'm saying? So it was a slower kind of bossa nova yeah. type of thing. You know, which, you know, now if we hear Roxanne done that way, yeah. you know, we'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's cool, right? But, you know, at the time in yeah. which they were coming out, I mean, it, it took Andy and, and, and Stuart Copeland to make that song what it was. Yeah, so, that's true. so yeah, yeah. I, I do think, you know, the melody, the rawness, the, the goodness of the song was there. Yeah. But I think what makes a song hit a hit is a combination of everything. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the song, it's the performance on the record. Mm -hmm. It's the you know, production on the record. It's, it's the cultural connection. You know, yeah, it's all of those yeah. things, you know, but but I I'm, I'm just saying as far as I think it's the whole recording. Mm -hmm. uh, it's that whole aspect yeah, that goes yeah. into yeah. making that song a hit. Yeah. It's more than just the song. Yeah. You know, I, I think you got to begin with the song, but yeah. you know, and it's then these the person that we talked about that. I, you know, it took it took decades for me to to understand how important the singer is right. to deliver. Not every person, and they can be great a great singer, can deliver a song where right. it, it it gives you goosebumps or it. Is the one, you and, know. And, and let me kind of go back to is that um, maybe like with Quincy Jones and the Goosebumps thing, it was more about the song being great mm -hmm. as opposed to the song being the a hit. hit, right? And yeah. I'm and saying, yeah. and, and I think that those are yeah. those are distinction yeah. that that great songs may not become hits, yeah. right? Yeah, bad songs may become hits. Yeah, that's so true. so you know, a song being a hit doesn't necessarily mean it's a great song. Yeah, you know, yeah. I I usually think of a great song as a song that kind of. Um, survives the the test of time so, yeah. you know right. you know until i thought about you know 
um, Take On Me yeah. by AHA. Yeah. Because that is a song that has survived the test of time. Oh my goodness, and new but I never thought that was a great yeah. song. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it was it was all right song. Right. It was a hit song. Yeah. But I didn't think it was a great song. But it has survived the, yeah. the test of time. I mean, yeah. you know, there's been a lot of songs. I would say that it has survived the test of time more than something like a Little Red Corvette. Yeah. That's you know, that, 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 that song has become are, more are of a staple. on it because yes. people are using the melody. They're using the the feel of it. Uh, yeah, the Blinded of, Lights and all the yeah, rest of these yeah. songs that the, you know, the weekend has done. It was yeah. built off a take on me. Yeah, so a whole, like, sub-genre that's, that's going on now. That's, that's built, built off on that, that song. Other Charlie Puth, yep. Yeah, yeah so many song. songs are yeah. built off of it, so. Yeah, so. What do you guys think? We love to hear your thoughts on this topic. Again, we are not the be all end all when it comes to knowing this. We have just charted some things over time. But what is your story to let us know what you think yeah. qualifies as a hit song? We'd love to hear about it. Put it in the comments below. And what else? And Sugar Fit. So Sugar Fit is streaming everywhere. everywhere if you want to get the CD, guys. you can definitely get it from CD Baby. You can get it from Bandcamp. And what else do we have? We have ringtone. So every song on the album has its very own ringtone. So if you would like to see the list of ringtones so that you can download... Check the link below, and if you dig the vibe and you want to be a part of the tribe, be sure to subscribe. We're wishing you love, peace, and chicken juice. Yeah.